That was a grand experiment, and it worked really well. He sold the community, built it, sold it out in, in just a matter of a few years from, like I said, from about approximately 1959 and was pretty well done with it by 1965 or 66. And he realized that that's a, that's a great concept. There's terrific potential here, but it isn't enough. It wasn't enough because what he did was he just built a home, he built a condominium, and he built a small little recreation building where people could get together. They had a pool table, they had cars, it was a social activity center. But he didn't figure that was enough. So at this point, he was always out looking for land, acquiring more property. And he acquired a series of groves in north central Pinellas County. And he was able to create an assemblage of a little over 500 acres in that time. And in 1966, he started the On Top of the World community. Well, why did he call it On Top of the World? Well, interestingly, this property that he acquired was the highest land in Pinellas County. It was four or five miles inland from the bay and four or five miles inland from the gulf and about three miles inland from the bay. So it was not in any flood zone. And interestingly enough, from uh, Corpus Christi, Texas, all the way around the coast, from Louisiana all the way around Florida and up into Virginia, it was the highest land above sea level, mean sea level, approximately 66 or 67 feet above sea level. So, interesting story. What was with the name? Okay, you have this high property that's somewhat coastal, overlooking the coast. And the popular song, On Top of the World, it was emotive of some very positive thinking, some very positive ideas. And you know it was a name that really stuck. It caught on with people. Where do you live? On top of the world. I live on top of the world. 